Welcome to the next project. This is episode five of my Goodwill Fender Starcaster Extreme Mod Project Series. I think I got that right. Doing more work on the body, uh, holes being poked in it here and there, getting ready to do a new bridge tremolo route. Um, before I do that though, I'm actually working on the neck a lot, um, sanding and polishing up the fingerboard, which is coated in CA or super glue. Uh, radiusing, cutting, pressing, uh, leveling, crowning, polishing frets to go in the neck. What else? A little bit of polishing work on the headstock. Uh, that'll probably be in the next episode. But just a lot of little bits and pieces to get this closer to being a guitar-shaped thing again. Let's start the next project. Well, we are moving into uncharted territory for me here. I have this rear access cavity that I need to put a cover on. The cover that I drew, I could have reshaped it to maybe use the existing wood that's already in the body, but I decided to challenge myself and make new mounting points that fit within this weird shape that I've drawn up. So I used the original plug as a spacer wedged it in the hole, took it to the drill press, drilled some holes that match some dowel material that I have, and I'm gluing them in. Give it plenty of time to dry, which was probably overnight, I don't remember. Taking a uh, Japanese pull saw, a uh, Harbor Freight version, and trimming the tops off for now. And this will get dressed up and eventually get routed for a cavity cover. As always, I'm kind of jumping around on tasks. I am back on the neck and trying to get the finish of the fingerboard to a final place uh, so it's ready for frets. I started out using 600 grit paper. It's a wet dry paper, but I used it dry. Then up to 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, and now 5,000 before I add rubbing compound to polish it out. The reason I don't sand wet is I don't want water getting down on the fret slots, which would probably cause me a lot of grief. As it is using rubbing compound on it the way that I do, I still get debris down in the uh, fret slots, which is not ideal, but I'm gonna live with it. I go back through and I clean out all of the fret slots and uh, the fingerboard is looking really good. Honestly, for kind of a turd fingerboard, it's rough and a little bit ugly, but it looks good. Shiny now, that's nice rough cutting frets to length. But before I did that, I actually took the fret wire, which I, I purchased this in a big roll. I wipe it down in this case with acetone, I think, or maybe lacquer thinner, I don't know, to get all of the manufacturing. It's not oil, but it's some kind of, probably uh, something they use to pull it through their dies, probably to help move the metal along. Clean it really good. Then I radius it and uh, then move on to cutting it to length. And now I've nipped all the tangs back. Uh, using just a small file here to take off any little bit of excess tang that might be uh, stuck on the bottom of the fret. And overall, the, the cheap case nibbler that I've converted to a fret nipper works really well. This is nickel fret wire, however. Here I'm gently scraping a V in the very top of the fret slots. And we are ready to uh, inject a little bit of tie bond into the fret slots. This is the first time I've done this. I've uh, read and seen and everything else, other people doing this. And it's not really to glue the fret into the slot as much as just to fill up any void that might be in there, help reduce any loose space. Um, I don't know how it'll work. Um, I don't think it will hurt, but will it help? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, giving you a little bit of a close-up of the fret press, smashing the frets down in the slot, or slots, and also uh, adding more glue and tapping frets into the slots. Kind of a split screen here. We got fancy action happening. I do use the nylon end of that little hammer to tap the frets in. Here we have a bit more of a close-up of frets getting pressed in. And as I was starting, I was notice um, the fingerboard was moving a lot as I was pressing the frets in, and it took me a couple frets to figure out what was going on. 
I realized, and I don't know when I did this, but I had some back bow cranked into the neck. So I did adjust that out after I got these frets in and uh, got the neck flat, leveled out, and everything pressed in good. Double checked everything. All the frets seated really well. Now we're going through, nipping all the ends off flush with the edge of the fingerboard. Uh, I know some people say they leave them overhanging by just a hair for some reason. I don't know why. I've had good luck doing it this way. On to beveling the edges of the frets. Uh, I do something a little different than a lot of people. Um, the basic approach is the same. I First I square the fret ends up with the edge of the fingerboard, so it's, we'll call that a zero degree. It's straight up and down. Could call it a 90. Uh, we're going to call it zero for this discussion. And then I will uh, follow that up with my little beveling block. I can pull the file out, move it to a different angle, and I'll cut a 10 degree back, and then I'll move on and I'll cut it to a final 20 degree. Some people go 30 and 35 degrees, and I don't really like that much uh, slope because I do round the end of frets. This leaves me enough meat left on the fret wire to uh, actually round them. We'll see that soon. We're at a point where we're ready to level the frets now. I use my notch straight edge once again, double check, give it a little bit of a twist to make sure I do have a very flat fingerboard. As you press frets in, the neck will very likely take on a little bit of a back bow again. So you need to crank on the truss rod and get it flat. Adding tape, because tape is my friend, it keeps me from causing more work down the line and a permanent marker on all the tops of the frets. And something that I'm just now discovering, I think my Blue Magic marker there is really old. Even though it still works, it doesn't really dry super well. Um, and I've noticed I'll get blue plugging up on my sandpaper here. And as I move on to uh, do my fret filing, the little bit of blue, I suppose that there's some kind of uh, thinner that's in those markers. and it's changing consistency enough to stay just a little gummy and my files are plugging up with this blue goop and the material I'm filing away. So I need to get a new marker. That's just me complaining. As we can see, I have not gotten a new blue marker yet, but this is where I'm really starting to have the light bulb go off as I have to clean my file repeatedly. This is nickel fret wire, so it's sand or it files very easily, but uh, I, I keep getting a lot of blue uh, nickel gunk built up in my file. So I'm continually using either naphtha or acetone and an old uh, toothbrush to clean my file, get all the debris out of the, this is a diamond uh, grit file from Stumac. And I'm on the fence. I like it and I don't. It's a, a good file. It's a Z file. Actually, I have a couple of them. They're very good. They're very expensive. I don't know. They're better than you know, rubbing two sticks together. And here we're going to take a quick look at uh, just kind of how I go about getting that rounded end on the frets. And it looks like the fret is really hanging out, and that's because the board does have some radius on the end. But as I round the end of the fret wire over, that overhang kind of disappears. Uh, once I do my final filing and sanding and polishing, the fret is really right up against the board. So. This is a little misleading in how it looks initially. Looks like there's a big gap you could, you know, drive a bus underneath, but it's not quite that bad. And here we go. This is actual speed. Yeah, that's how quickly I work. If I did work that fast, this guitar would have been done a couple months ago. There is a lot of work involved in this, and I had a piece of tape that failed, so I replaced it. I'd rather replace tape. Then repair the fingerboard finish or the neck finish or whatever. 
Here, moving on to polishing the frets. And I tried one of those little fret saver things. I've used it before for various things, and honestly, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. And I polished like a fret and a half of it, and I just threw it aside. Going back to using a Dremel style tool with a little wool pad, I think it is, or cotton pad. I never remember. I think it's a wool pad. And using some metal polish and just, uh, you know, applicator is an uh, index finger and just zip right along. Uh, don't wear a nice white uh, shirt that you'd wear to church or something because you get splatter all over it. And if you don't go to church, don't wear a nice white shirt that you go out partying in because you get splatter all over it. Peeling off our protective friend here in just a moment. There it goes. Goodbye, old friend. And we're going to look at some nice luster. You know, it turned out pretty good for being a pretty rough neck. I finally mustered the courage to uh, address the neck pocket area and I'm doing some measuring and trying to figure out my game plan and I'm just going to jump in once I figure out how deep the neck pocket needs to go back into the body and start trimming away some wood. Get rid of the extra that's just going to be in my way. Bandsaw work now that I have the new tires on the bandsaw. Once again a little more measuring, a little more figuring. I want to make sure I get everything cut back about the way it needs to be. And here's my pickup template. I am modifying it into a routing template for the sides of the neck pocket. Using a compression bit in my router with a bearing up at the moment. This particular router bit has two bearings. It has a top and a bottom bearing. Here I've removed the upper bearing in this, which would be actually the bottom bearing, but it's on top in this situation. I've removed it, so I use the bearing at the bottom of the bit as we're looking at it on my template. I'm talking a lot. But using this nice compression bit, which is great, it runs across end grain really well, does a nice cut. Using some protective gear to put the upper bearing as we're looking at it back on and throwing some more wood chips around. And this is actual speed, so you can see how slow I go. I'm keeping my hands out of the way. It really did a nice job. There's one little spot. I wasn't aggressive enough, didn't push the body into the bit enough. We got that cleaned up. Party continues. Now it is time to figure out true alignment on the neck. And there's a hundred ways to do this. I use string quite often. I do have a laser, which I rarely use. I find the width of the laser to be too wide for my bad eyesight, I guess. I can use a string, which is about fifth the width of the laser beam. It works really well. In this case, I just use two yardsticks, metal yardsticks, rulers, and an alignment on the center line of the body. Did some routing and it is looking good. I'm happy, happy. Checking the depth, we have zero set and our depth is 0.595 inches, almost 596 actually. I was aiming for 594, so darn it, I routed two thousandths too deep. Here I'm going to route the spring cavity on the back of the body, and I could have made an actual template, but this just shows you that there's many ways to skin a cat, which I feel bad for cats. They get skinned quite often. I'm not sure why. Basically I just put down some blue tape 
to protect the veneer, to protect the wood fibers of the body. And then I put my template tape, which is a double-sided tape on top of that. And then I stick my blocks of MDF, in this case, on that I used for my template. And here I no longer need the uh, MDF buildup. I did my final routing just with the uh, bearing on the bit in the, the well that I was routing. Now basically repeating the same idea but on the front of the guitar I'm going to cut in the pickup cavities. Again I put down the blue tape to protect the wood fibers of the veneer and I put my pattern tape on top of the blue tape, stuck my template to the pattern tape which is double sided masking tape basically and taking shallow passes to do all my routing. I'm not in a hurry. I'm uh, aiming for a certain depth. I looked at the old Fender uh, dimension drawing to figure out how deep I needed to go. And here I'm doing a little touch-up work. All of the wiring from the neck, middle, and bridge pickup end up back in the bridge pickup location before they go into the control cavity. So I open that up just a little bit, make a little bit of room for all the wires to hang out before they dump into the control cavity. We are wrapping up this video and I want to thank everybody again for hanging out with me as we work our way through this project. It's going along pretty good. There are a number of things that we've had to address and fix and might as well just modify it while we're at it and that will continue. Please comment. I love hearing from everybody all around the world. Let me know where you're at. Ring the bell because I guess that will give you give somebody some notification. Um, hit the thumbs up icon. That's a good thing. Subscribe if you haven't already. Take care of yourself and those around you and I'll see you soon.